All right, so in the last segment of the series, we're going to just wrap up a couple of items, and here are the items. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the shadow clipping on this large container view. So if we go to content view and we resume, sorry, home view, let's go to home view, we like this preview, resume. You'll notice that when we did our, we had to put some clipping here on the large location button. And the clipping is so that we can, uh, when we make the height of this entire item zero, that we don't end up having the shadow still, you know, it's still present. So if you go here, what you can actually see is that the shadow, let's zoom in, the shadow is clipped right there at that corner. That's not nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to the large button and we're going to get rid of that shadow. And instead, we'll go to home view. Now when it, when it re reloads, there's no shadow at all. But what we can do is we can take this, um, this item right here, wherever we had it, right here. So this is for each right here. And let's close this, we have a little more room to see what we're working with. And just like we had a, um, we used a ternary operator before, we'll use a ternary operator on this. So say dot shadow. We want to modify the radius and the Y. So the Y offset we'll have will be four. But what we'll do is we'll use the same ternary operator. So self dot selected continent equal to this destination dot continent val. And if that's true, then we'll have radius of four, but if it's not looking for radius of zero. And so what that does is it gives us what we're looking for. It gives us that offset again. And that all this occurs after the clipping, because the clipping occurs in the initialization. So that takes care of the first part. Let's get rid of that. Okay, that's done. Okay. Uh, the next thing is when we go to the uh, let's go back here, open up. We go to the content view. If you notice on this preview, we have this clipping up here. We have some issues down here. So this is kind of ugly if you look at that. That's that's ugly the way it's clipped. So what I want to do is I want to go to home view. And I want to I want to take this Z stack. And I want to say edges, ignore. I just want to ignore the bottom. If I ignore the top, it'll create all sorts of weird things up top. So if I just ignore the bottom, and we can look right here at the content view. And now it's going through the through the bottom, but it's actually cutting off the bottom portion of Zurich. So we're gonna go here and just say one more thing is we'll say at the bottom of our scroll view, let's just put one more, sorry, at the bottom of this V stack, we will put um, a spacer. Actually, let's put it at the bottom of the scroll view. Put, at the bottom of the scroll view would be better. We'll put a spacer and we'll give it a height of 80. Let me go to the content view and let's take a look at that. Sure enough, Zurich is not cut off, and now none of them will be cut off. You go here, it's perfect. Okay, so that takes care of item number two we wanted to fix. The next thing that we want to do is, if I, if I get rid of the, uh, if I do edges ignore, the same way I did the bottom here, if I do that on the top, then this search bar will end up up here in this cutout. So what I'll do instead is I'll actually take, I'll go to the home view, I can take this part right here, this linear gradient, okay, and I can actually move that and go to content view. And instead, I can actually put that behind the tab view. So I'm going to take this tab view we had. And I'm going to really quickly just, I'm going to click in, I'm going to write embed it in the V stack. I'm going to change that to Z stack, but it's just easier to do it like that. And behind the tab view, I'll put that linear gradient. So now when I resume, we should get exactly what we're looking for here. The one issue we have is that this tab view has a white background. So let's see how we can get rid of that. Let's go home. And maybe we can try to give the Z stack a background uh, color of red and see what happens. Let's check the content view and see if it mirrors that. So what we'll do instead of that is we'll just make it clear. And now let's check that content view. So we're still having that issue. So we can see maybe if we can take this tab view, the whole tab view, say background color dot clear. 
So we're still having that issue, so we'll have to figure out how to deal with that. But for now, let's just keep moving right along. So I'm gonna leave, I'm, I am gonna leave this linear grade in here, okay, for now. And uh, we're gonna just figure out how to make that tab view clear. So the next thing we'll do, um, actually, let's go ahead and just solve right away. So let's, let's just get rid of that. Let's take this linear grade in, okay. We're gonna get rid of the Z stack we made here. We're gonna put the tab view, we're gonna leave it as it was. We're gonna get the home view. We're gonna put the linear gradient back in its place. And instead, what we'll do is we will go to content view Oh, go to home view, uh, and we will say edges ignoring safe area. Actually, we'll have to do it in content view. So content view, we'll say the tab view is going to have edges ignoring you know, the all. Or if nothing else, we can just make it dot top. And that takes care of that. So we just had to do edges ignoring on the top there. And we get what we're looking for, okay? So yeah, so that was a bit confusing, but so essentially you can you can cure that issue by just doing edges ignoring for the top of the tab view, and since since in the since in the home view alone it fills that area, it'll also fill that area in the content view, which 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 contains that tab view. So that fixes that. The next thing we'll do is, uh, yes, we need to fix this issue. This four point seven zero zero zero, all all that stuff does not look right. So if we go to this large location button, we get this 2.5, 0, 0, 0, 0. You don't want that. What we want instead is we want to say 2.5, and that's it. So I, I took some time and I wrote this out before creating this video. I'll walk you through what it says. So for, instead of writing average rating over 5, we'll use string and polarization or something else. This has two pieces here. We want to have, we want to take 2.5, and we want to treat this average rating as a string. And then we want to take that string and we want to use the split function. The split separates the things on the left of the. I chose to split it by the decimal. So I could have written, if if I had if it said two and then equals five, I could have say split it by the equal. But I chose to split it using a decimal. So I split the things on the left from the things on the right, and they end up in an array. So the zeroth item of the split is the two, and the first item is the five. And if this said 2.5.4, then it would have been the zero the zeroth element in this array would have been the two the one-th element would have been five and the second element would have been uh, the four. So this is just splitting up, it's treating this number as a string and splitting it up using this or this item, whatever character I chose to split it with. So what I did is I said the string that's going to go in here is going to be equal to, we'll split this open, we'll take the zeroth item and then we'll go to the right side and we'll just take the first item. And then you have to write that description because technically when you use average rating dot split and then choose the item it creates a substring but if you just write dot description it kind of converts that into a string so that takes care of that and that's how we got this 2.5 so even easier if I just kind of let it sprawl out entirely so so it says text so we have average ratings we split it with the with the decimal and we choose the zeroth item which is the two and then we add this dot in between and then we split it again using the decimal and we choose the first item, okay? And so that's that. And let's keep moving right along. So that's fix the decimal. Okay, that fixes that. The next thing we don't like the, we don't like the spacing of these stars. We want these stars to be right aligned. So that's an easy one. So we'll find those stars. That's right here. Star dot fill. Now I just need to do one thing. And that's in that h stack above the for each. I put a spacer. That pushes all the stars to the right. All right, that's nice and easy. Okay, the last thing we need to do is these stars need to update. So if this is 2.5, I need to see two stars, not not four stars. If this is 3.5, so it'll be three. So that's a pretty easy one. What I'm going to do is it's not going to be for each up to four. It's going to be for each, and then I'm going to have I'm going to convert the average rating to an int. And so now essentially it does a front end rounding. So if it says 2.5, it ignores the 0.5 and it just looks at the 2. So two stars right there. So I save it and I open this back up and I look at the home view again. I can close that so we can really get a good look at it. And voila, we fix all the issues that we didn't like with it. We have a functioning h stack or h scroll or scroll view with an h stack that lets us do this part. We fixed up the clipping, 
we fixed up this star issue. It truly does. If this is a 3.8, this is three stars. This one, Provence, has five stars. It's exactly what we're looking for now. So the formatting should be good. All right. And now it lines up perfectly with what we were trying to make, which is this right here. All right. So side by side. Here we go. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.